Now suppose that the demand curve reflected here does not capture all of the benefits of production, uh, all of the benefits for, from uh, using the good. Uh, in the textbook we use the case of uh, shock absorbing uh, bumpers. If I buy a, a shock absorbing bumper I get uh, some benefit uh, from it uh, in the sense that I will experience less damage than I would if I didn't have the shock absorbing uh, bumper and I hit somebody. But by the same token, other people get some benefits because the, my shock absorbing bumpers uh, will absorb some of the shock in the event that I hit them or they hit me and they will experience less damage. But if this demand curve captures only the benefits received by the buyers, then we can see that the uh, good will be uh, under uh, produced. That is, let's suppose that the true uh, demand curve for the good which captures all benefits is equal to uh, D2. This vertical distance here, the distance between A and B uh, represents the value to people who are not actually buying uh, the bumpers. When I go to buy my bumpers uh, I consider my value which is B. Uh, I can't consider the value to other people, at least I cannot charge them for it, and as a consequence, uh, my demand uh, for the good uh, can be understated, simply because I cannot charge others for the benefits that they receive from what I, I do. Now, in a competitive market, the true demand curve that's going to be reflected in prices is D1. The true demand curve reflecting all benefits is going to be uh, D2. The supply curve, assuming no external costs, will be S1. The equilibrium will be there. But notice that in this case, the additional value of the Q1 plus 1 unit, Q1 uh, plus 1, the additional value is really there. The additional cost of producing that unit is there. We're missing out on additional value equal to this. The same is true for this additional unit, this additional unit, this one, this one, this one, all the way up to there. So the market should in fact be producing uh, Q2, uh, whereas in fact it is producing uh, Q1. Uh, and there is an inefficiency in the market equal to, to this triangular area uh, uh, here, this striped uh, triangular area. This market inefficiency can be uh, corrected by simply uh, providing cons consumers with the subsidy uh, equal to this uh, vertical distance. If they are provided with the subsidy, then the, their demand will go up and uh, the price of the good will go up. Uh, but more importantly, you will capture all of these additional benefits in that uh, triangular area. And the result is that uh, output uh, will in fact go up. One of the arguments for um, uh, pollution control uh, methods uh, is that there are external costs associated and that the producers should in fact uh, be forced to bear uh, those costs. For that matter, consumers should be forced to bear the cost. One of the arguments for um, uh, subsidizing education is that there are supposedly external costs associated with uh, education. And as a consequence, uh, without government subsidies of some form, uh, there would be an underproduction of education. Uh, thank you very much.